Jess Engine is my 3D game engine that I've created, written in C++ using OpenGL, and it's actually really interesting to work on game engines. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot. So here's the scene that I've created in the game engine. The game engine uses OpenGL for the GPU stuff and SDL to display the scene on the window. So first of all, what is OpenGL? Well, OpenGL is a graphics library written in drivers on the GPU, which allows us to interact with our graphics card for rendering graphics. We use Glue to get access to a range of OpenGL calls that we can make and interact with OpenGL. So first of all, let's look at how to draw a triangle. We'll use SDL to create a window like this. Now we'll initialize blue and draw a blue screen every frame just to check it's working. So now to draw our triangle, we'll make an OpenGL program which encapsulates a vertex and fragment shader. Now that we have our program set up, we'll add this array, which is our vertex data for each vertex in our triangle, and we'll send that off to the GPU in a buffer. After setting up our update and render loop, we can bind the vertex data buffer, use the correct program, enable the position and color attributes, and tell OpenGL how to access them, and call GL draw arrays to draw our triangle. Once we've done all this, we now have basically the hello world of OpenGL. A skybox is implemented, and this is because when testing, the skybox uses slightly less memory and less CPU resources. Also, it better suits the PSX aesthetic that the game has. The game uses instancing to instance render uh, trees around the map. Uh, and there's also a heads up display with a functioning minimap on. Uh, the game scene has a dynamic mesh, which is the ocean around the island in the game scene. Uh, the movement of the ocean is all shader based and uses the, uses the sum of signs methods. The shader code works by creating 32 waves. Each wave has an amplitude, frequency in terms of wavelength and speed. Each wave has slightly less amplitude and more speed and a shorter wavelength. To work out the Y offset for any wave, this function is used where x, z is the vertex position multiplied by a direction and t is the time passed multiplied by speed. Once we work out the y offset for each individual wave, we can add all the offsets together and offset our final vertex position. You can click on an object and axis aligned bounding boxes will be used to determine what object you've clicked on. Then you can move, rotate and scale the objects. You can press delete to delete the object and press space to open the content drawer where you can click on an object thumbnail to add the object to the scene. A post processing effect is applied, uh, which is a vignette. Uh, it makes the pixels darker the further away from the center that they are from the screen. Uh, this is done by rendering the scene to a different frame buffer and retrieving the frame buffer data as a texture. Then a quad can be drawn across the screen with the texture retrieved being sampled onto the quad and in the fragment shader post-processing effects can be done which affect those pixels which are being drawn on the quad. Particle effects are present so a plane with a smoke image is moved, rotated and scaled x number of times and then each time the vertex shader is used to update the particle's position based on time. Uh, reflection is achieved by getting the vector from the camera to the pixel. The reflection of this vector and the normal vector of the fragment can be used to sample a skybox, which gives the reflections. Thin fond lighting is also implemented. This is made up of two parts, a Lambertian diffuse and a specular. The Lambertian diffuse is calculated by taking the dot product of the normal vector and the vector from the pixel to the directional light. This can be clamped between 0 and 1, meaning any pixel directly facing the light source is fully lit, and any pixel facing away or perpendicular aren't lit at all, which gives us this effect. We can calculate the Blin fond by taking the fragment to the light source vector and adding it onto the fragment to camera vector and we'll take the dot product of, of this with the normal direction to get our specular amount. We can then multiply this by is Lambert greater than zero which will return um, zero if it's not and one if it is. This ensures that any pixel facing away from the light or perpendicular to it uh, there's no specular. Uh, we, we also have a gloss variable to change the glossiness of the specular. And finally, we'll sample the model's texture and multiply the sample color by the Lambertian amount and add on our specular amount. And we can also add on a default lighting amount as well. When performance testing, I found that without the memory leak, the game runs at 292 megabytes of memory. However, the memory leak is present, uh, which needs to be fixed urgently. Um, I know it's something to do with models because when the models are taken out, there's no memory leak. The game uses 1-6% processor utilization. One optimization I could make is when adding an object to the scene, load the object on a different thread and see it makes the game pause for a second when adding the object. And this testing was done on release mode. So that's it. That's a quick run through of the game scene I made in Jet Engine and some of the features of it. Thank you for watching.